Hi, this is Stradvungesmaton.com and today we are here to unbox and have a quick look at the Lenovo White K4 Note. Lenovo released the K3 Note last year for 10,000 rupees and it was a very successful device in the Indian market. This time around, Lenovo has gone a step further with the K4 Note. The phone comes with a premium design and uses premium materials, a fingerprint scanner, 3GB of RAM and a bigger battery. Apart from this, the phone has built-in customizations and features for the VR headset in the OS. You can either choose to go for the anti-VR headsets bundled by Lenovo or you could use the available ones like the Google Cardboard. Even though the box shows the white version of the device, Lenovo has only launched the black version in India right now. There's no news about the launch of the white one either. On the sides of the box, we have the Lenovo and white branding. The box also mentions that there is a back cover and a screen protector bundled in with it. On the back, we have the company information and specifications. A lot of people have questions around the SAR value of the device. The box mentions that it is 0.844 Watt per kg and 0.711 Watt per kg on the head and body respectively. This keeps the SAR value well under the allowed limits. At the bottom of the box, there are some highlights of the phone's specifications. The device has a 13.9 cm that is 5.5 inch full HD screen, dual front facing speakers with Dolby Atmos support and a 3 mic audio input system to provide better noise cancellation. I will talk about all of the specifications during the course of the video. So let's quickly unbox this device and have a look at what Lenovo has to offer. Like I mentioned earlier, we only have the black color option available in India and it is priced at 12,000 rupees. On the top of the box, we have the phone. The back cover is attached to the phone and we will have a look at it in a while. Next in the box, we have the screen protector. We have the quick start guide, service center information, etc. Micro USB charging and data syncing cable and the wall charger. The wall charger is a 5.2 volt 2 amp which should help the phone charge faster. The micro USB cable is quite long and seems to be of decent build quality as well. The box does not come with a headset and you will have to buy one of those separately in case you need one. Now let me show you the back cover that comes with the phone. It is a transparent hard case and it's extremely thin. This could be prone to scratches but it's nice to have it bundled with the box. Coming to the device itself, the phone does look really good and feels premium and solid in the hand. I also see the glass isn't edge to edge, which should keep the phone safe during any impact on the edges. On the front of the device, we have a 5.5 inch Full HD screen. At the bottom, we have the Android capacitor buttons, front facing stereo speakers, one on the top and one at the bottom, with Dolby Atmos support. It has a very HTC like speaker reel, which makes it look really good. We also have a 5 megapixel front facing camera, a bunch of other sensors, and also a multicolor LED notification light. At the back of the device, we have a fingerprint scanner, a 13 megapixel camera with dual tone LED flash, a secondary microphone on the top, the Lenovo and the Dolby Atmos branding. On the right of the device, we have the power lock unlock button and the volume locker. The buttons do have a very tactile feel. On the top, we have a 3.5mm headphone jack. The device has nothing on the left. At the bottom, we have the micro USB charging and data syncing port as well as the microphone. The sides are all metal, they have a brushed metal feel and chamfered edges which gives the device a premium look and feels solid in the hand. Let me pop open the back cover and show you what is on the inside. The phone has two SIM card slots, both of which support 4G. The second SIM card slot can either work as a micro SD card or a SIM card slot which is kind of a disadvantage and you will have to keep that in mind before you buy the phone. We have a 3300mAh battery that should easily last a day with normal usage. The back cover on the phone is thin and is clearly a fingerprint magnet. I would recommend it to either get a skin or have a back cover on. It is a good thing that Lenovo does include a case in the box. The back cover does have a lot of locks to hold it tight and not open when it has an impact. Lenovo has not mentioned any back cases being available for the device later. Interestingly, the area around the battery seems to be loose and feels hollow. I'm not sure if this is the case only on my device. If you notice this on your phone as well, please do leave it in the comment section below. Under the hood, we have a MediaTek MT6753 octa-core processor clocked at 1.3 GHz and is coupled with a Mali T720 MP3 GPU. It has a 16 GB of internal storage, 3 GB of RAM and is running Android Lollipop 5.1. It does come with OTG support and the thickness at the thickest point of the phone is 9.2 mm. The Android capacitive buttons at the bottom are not backlit which is a disappointment. 
I now have the full phone set up. The Ponte does feel fast and responsive and the overall experience is lag free. Lenovo uses almost stock Android with minor customizations. The notification panel has been changed by Lenovo to bring in more options like Dolby, Super Saver, etc. Lenovo has already released the software update for this phone and it's 283 MB in size. It does not mention what the changes are. The theme on the settings drawer is also unchanged and has a strong Android look and feel. The fingerprint scanner is fairly easy to set up and is accurate as well. It's placed at the right spot and you can add up to two scans. I must say that I have been using the phone for a couple of days now and the fingerprint scanner is fast and works 95% of the times. Apart from the dual SIM settings, NFC, etc, you also have a feature section in the settings that you can use to set up additional features like double tap to wake, gestures using the fingerprint scanner, etc. I will be uploading another video regarding the features you should be using once you get the phone. Let us now look at the camera on the device. The phone comes with a 13 megapixel camera with an f2.2 aperture. The camera UI is clean but has limited options. The autofocus and the shutter speed is fast and accurate. You can choose to click panorama shots and also apply filters. Under camera settings, we have different tabs for photo, video and other settings. Under photo, we have settings like ISO, white balance, etc. The maximum resolution of the video is full HD. I was not expecting more than that anyway for the device in this budget. You also have other settings for storage, location, shutter sound, etc. My first impression, the UI is sleek and every setting is well within reach. The photos do look good and the color reproduction seems accurate. You have options to click photos using filters and you can download more as well. Considering all of us do a lot of browsing on a device, let's have a look at the browser performance. The device comes with Chrome and UC browser built in. I was using Chrome for the test and the device fared really well. The initial page scrolling was jittery and the response was slow, but once the page loaded completely, it was smooth and seamless. The desktop version of GSM Marina also loaded fine, pinch to zoom and double tap to zoom also worked as I would expect. Let us now go into YouTube and test the stereo speakers. I was expecting really good quality and it didn't let me down. The phone is an absolute stunner when it comes to sound quality on the speakers. It's loud, crisp and does not distort even on the fullest volume. I'll try and include the with and without Dolby Atmos turned on in the full review. Okay, that's all I have for today. The phone is totally worth the money based on my first impression. I will be uploading the full review in the following week. This is my first video. Please do like, share and subscribe to support the channel. In case you have any queries or questions around the phone, please do leave it in the comment section below so that I can address it or include it in my full review. Thank you.